Earlier this month, temperatures throughout the western United States soared. In California's capital city, temps reached a record-breaking 116 degrees Fahrenheit on September 6th, more than 25 degrees above Sacramento's average high for September. The extreme temperatures came during the peak of wildfire season, and in many media reports, the two factors were referenced in a way that suggests heat causes more frequent or more intense wildfires. California's heat wave fueling destructive fires, the Los Angeles Times wrote in a September 9th headline. But does extreme heat really cause more wildfires? Not exactly. The issue is more nuanced than that. Let's examine why. Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. When you look at where most wildfires occur in the United States, average temperature isn't much of a factor. Last year, for instance, Montana, the sixth coldest state in the nation, experienced more wildfires than Florida, the hottest state in America. But combine high heat with dry conditions and enough vegetation to act as fuel to burn, and then you start introducing more risk. Here's Michelle Steinberg, director of the NFPA Wildfire Division, with more information. When we're talking about extreme heat waves, so we've got hot conditions for extraordinarily hot conditions for a number of days or weeks that um, that in itself isn't going to cause a fire, but it's one of the three prerequisites. You've got to have the fuel source. Uh, the vegetation has to be uh, receptive to ignition. So you can think about if it's really hot in Florida, it's usually really humid too. Uh, to think about this time of the year in Florida, for example, just as an example, um, you're going to have less likelihood of igniting vegetation in a humid condition because of all that moisture. Uh, so the heat isn't isn't is not as big of a factor because of that environment. But if you're talking about extended heat in dry conditions uh, that's contributing to drought, that's contributing to uh, the fuel moisture is what we talk about when we talk about the plants, right, and the trees. If their relative humidity is low, they're just that more, much more likely to ignite when there's an ignition. And that ignition can come from lightning and it can come from all kinds of things that human beings do, whether intentional or accidental. In other words, wildfire, like any other fire, needs three things to burn. This is known as the fire triangle, and it includes an ignition source, fuel, and oxygen. What Michelle explains is that heat can contribute to that fuel factor by making the fuel drier and therefore more prone to burning and even ignition in the first place. Just try lighting a wet twig on fire versus a dry one. So this is why when heat waves strike in places that are already particularly dry, like California, Officials get worried about fires. On a global scale, with scientists predicting warmer and warmer temperatures in the coming years, experts have already predicted that the wildfire problem will get worse too, especially in dry climates like the Mediterranean. What we're seeing, for example, in Europe right now with these extended heat waves, in, you know, it's, it's abnormal for, you know, these conditions are really abnormal. And to have that extended heat wave it's not only producing the hot conditions that we worry about along with dryness and and, um, and wind, but it's it's drying out the fuels or the vegetation over a long period of time. Um, and it's also potentially causing drought issues around water supply. So if you think about, OK, we're going to have a major potential for major fire because of these conditions. And now we've also got less water to fight the fire with um, that. That's a huge contributing factor that we look at. Um, and so again, that, you know, looking at that fuel moisture, meaning your plants and trees are struggling to survive, they're just going to be that much more receptive to ignition uh, and potentially the fire spread depending on those conditions. Now, I should mention there is somewhat of an exception to this idea that heat alone can't start a fire. And that's the phenomenon known as spontaneous combustion, in which certain chemical reactions can lead certain fuels to self-heat to the point of combustion. I actually did a separate Learn Something New video on this topic earlier in the year, and a link to that is available in the description of this video. So what can you do to limit wildfire risk when hot and dry conditions persist? Well, over 80% of wildfires in the United States are caused by humans. Things like unattended campfires and carelessly discarded cigarettes can spark fires. So pay attention. Pay attention to the weather conditions and any warnings from safety professionals about high fire risk. If you do live in a fire-prone area, NFPA has a number of resources to help you prepare. 
Visit nfpa.org slash wildfire for more information. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, let us know by posting a positive comment, liking them, and sharing them with your friends. And as always, subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.